Squibb, and Pfizer. Minnesota has the only original wolf population in the continental United States, and 80% of Minnesotans believe the wolf should be protected. Howling for Wolves is asking Minnesotans to respect our true wildlife manager, the wolf. Their survival is critical to our ecosystems, our communities, and even our economy. As highly intelligent animals with strong social bonds, Minnesota wolves deserve to be protected and admired. Learn more at howlingforwolves.org. Let's live and let howl. For too long, American Indian tribes have faced a competitive disadvantage when litigating against powerful forces. With its American Indian law and policy practice, Robbins Kaplan LLP seeks to redefine excellence for high-stakes litigation in Indian country. They have worked hand-in-hand with tribes to implement the Tribal Law and Order Act, fighting against diminishment of tribal lands and natural resources, and improving public safety on reservations. The Robbins Kaplan American Indian Law and Policy Practice serves tribes and individuals on commercial, government investigations, agency and tribal boundary disputes, as well as personal injury. Founded and led by former United States attorneys Brendan Johnson and Tim Purden, their American Indian law and policy practice exists to bring justice to tribal clients whose claims in the past have been dismissed or ignored due to their underdog status. If you or your tribe are facing legal issues, contact RobbinsKaplan.com or call toll-free at 1-800-553-9910. Hey, Cudigy to all my friends and relatives in four directions. This is Robert Pilot of Native Roots Radio Presents I'm Awake. I'm here to ask you for your support. Finding honest, Native-centered news is not easy. But with your support, we're able to provide accurate information about Standing Rock, Line 3, treaty violations, and COVID-19 in our Native communities. Please visit Native Roots Radio Network on Patreon and donate if you can. That's Native Roots Radio Network on Patreon. Pinigigi, and thank you for your support. Hey, Ogama, I've been hearing a lot about this term, climate justice. What is that? Climate justice is recognizing that the negative impacts of climate change don't affect all people equally. It also means transitioning from a fossil fuel-based economy to a more sustainable future. MN350 is one of the groups that's pushing for this transition to protect our futures. You can even get involved, too. That's great, especially since I'm concerned about pipeline projects like Line 3. How can I help MN350? Just find them on Facebook or visit mn350.org. With your AM 950 weather, I'm Brett Johnson. Look for partly cloudy skies overnight with a low around 32. Friday sunny with a high near 41. And Saturday partly sunny with a high near 34. Victor's 1959 Cafe on Grand Avenue is a little piece of Cuban cuisine right in South Minneapolis. All of your Cuban favorites are there like the mango pancake, sandwich cubano, seafood paella, and more. Plus takeout is still available. More at victors1959cafe.com. Portions of Native Roots Radio may be pre recorded. They are going to become more brutal. Couldn't cut. Give me cut again. Because all the hippies are trying to be Indians anyway. They're going to become more repressive because it's a matter of dollars and their illusionary concepts of power. Hey, Victor. We must live in balance with the earth. And also with recent happenings at Wounded Knee. I am awake. Hey, Kadagi to all my friends and relatives in four directions. You're listening to Native Ritz Radio Presents I'm Awake, and I'm your host, Wakunjahade, and we discuss local, national, and just groovy Native events and news. As you all know, Native issues are human issues, and human issues are Native issues. This portion, this portion of the show brought to you by... by- Native, Native Roots Roots Radio, Radio. located at 700 Nicollet Mall in Minneapolis. We are supporting Native American artists. I did hear a little bit of an echo, but I think it's gone. <laughs> Let's hope so. Technology, you know. Hey, uh, just a great day here. Uh, and uh, it's great for day two to have Ogama back with us. Uh, everything seems right. And today we have uh, our guest is... Uh, Robert Lilligren, and then we're going to talk a little uh, sacred animals and maybe a little roundup in the news and and, uh, give us a call, too, uh, in the third segment. So let's start off here with Ogama with the news. 
Hi, Anim Bajou, everybody. I'm Ogama Ganuikwe with Native Roots Radio, and I have some news for you. As always, I like to start with Stop Line 3 News. Uh, MN350 put out a call today. Uh, December 14th of 2021 marks the one-year anniversary of the first large-scale arrest of nonviolent direct action against the Line 3 pipeline in Minnesota. Now we're over uh, 1,000 peaceful protesters that have been arrested uh, 12 months later, and the construction has caused numerous frackouts, permanently damaged wetlands, and other um, problems, but the pipeline is currently uh, operational. On December 14th, uh, MN350 is holding a National Stop Line 3 Day of Action. Make sure you go to mn350.org to sign up and get involved. Uh, you can host your own action. Uh, you can get involved in an action that's already existing. And the demands to Stop Line 3 are simple, asking President Biden and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to revoke the federal permits and conduct a full environmental impact statement because the true impact impacts of this project were never sufficiently studied. And that has been made clear, as we know, by numerous structural anomalies and incidents that have occurred throughout the construction pro process, as well as Line 3 violating treaty rights and harmed the environment and the uh, wild rice har harvest of the White Earth Nation, as we know from the uh, White Earth um, Manuman versus uh, DNR case that's currently happening right now. So December 14th, Day of action nationally to stop line three, figure out how you can join and how you can host an event by going to mn350.org or uh, showing up an event that's listed there. So that's going to be um, something that's coming up on your radar for line three. In other news of um, Enbridge, uh, Enbridge is line five in Michigan. Uh, the lawsuit is taking a bit of a different course. Um, initially, it looked like the uh, the Enbridge company had taken a federal lawsuit against, or excuse me, the state of Mich Michigan had taken a federal lawsuit against Enbridge um, over the Line 5 pipeline, uh, but they now say that they're dropping the federal lawsuit as of about the 30th of November, and it's going to focus on a separate lawsuit that was filed in state court instead. It's a change in legal strategy that's following the recent U.S. District Court ruling to keep the case in federal lawsuit, uh, which uh, rejected a motion to have the case sent back to state court. But Judge Janet Neff is saying that her court has jurisdiction because the Federal Pipeline Safety Act prohibits states from imposing safety regulations on interstate pipeline operations. Um, so this is going back to the state uh, state legal system in Michigan for the line five pump, pump, excuse me, pipeline. And then just a reminder that the Canadian government actually intervened in support of Enbridge um, in this fight against line five in Michigan and invoked a 1977 pipeline treaty with the U.S. to prevent Michigan from shutting off line five because Governor Whitmer has effectively, um, evicted Enbridge from the Straits of Mackinac. When was it, uh, Robert and Wendy, like last May, June, yeah. I think it was, she asked them to shut down? Yeah, even before that, and then they refused. Yep, they've just flat out refused, and now it's in court legislation, which is just... I have no words. I have no words for that. Um, in better news, um, for the first time, the Superior National Forest in Minnesota has hired a full-time tribal liaison as of the end of November. This is coming out of NPR, NPR News in Minnesota. Uh, Juan Martinez is going to be coordinating communication between the National Forest and the three Ojibwe bands in northeastern Minnesota, which include the Boys Fort Band of Chippewa, the Fond du Lac Band of Superior Chippewa, and the Grand Portage Band of Lake Superior. Chippewa and um, help to have them communicate better with the National Forest Service. So that is very exciting to see that we have a tribal liaison here in um, Minnesota for that. I mean, there's just, uh, why why wouldn't you? I guess it's kind of my thought. It's, it's, it's exciting that it's happening, but it seems like it's taken a really long time, right? There's Indians everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and then in other news coming out of, uh, well, I guess the Dakotas, the breadbasket area, 
Um, TC Energy is advancing a trade suit um, and they're seeking $15 billion over the canceled uh, Keystone XL line. Um, TC Energy has submitted a formal request for arbitration that seeks $15 billion in compensation from the United States. So TC Energy behind the Keystone XL is trying to sue the United States for $15 billion because uh, Biden canceled the Keystone XL pipeline. Um, Due to loss of funds. So write, we'll see where that check. goes. Write him a check. <laughs> I think it's probably worth it. Um, have you guys heard about the huge asteroid that's set to come by on Monday? Scary. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, yeah, an asteroid twice the size of Big Ben. And I don't like that they use that as a scale because we don't have Big Ben here in the U.S. So I don't know how big that is. Um, but it's set to crash into Earth's orbit on Monday. Um, it's a space rock named uh, 1994 WR-12 and has the power to cause an explosion and is set to pass by the Earth on Monday, but it will break the um, Earth's um, atmosphere. So we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully um, nothing terrible, um, but I just felt like maybe we should mention that one. <laughs> I, think, I thought I read somewhere that they're uh, shooting rockets at it to to uh, shoot it the other way, uh, like some movie. You know, I haven't read was that, that one. Dream? Was that a dream, or was that? That may have been a dream. Yeah, that might. Have, was that Armageddon? Was that <laughs> I don't movie? Know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Yeah, it um, is Armageddon. Okay. Okay, that's good. It, that was a long time ago. It's been a long time since I've seen that one. Um, and then, you know, we're coming up on the holidays and, uh, you know, talking about shortages and all those kinds of things. And uh, our Native families and communities are experiencing, um, you know, food deserts and lack of access to fresh foods. And now with this um, supply chain issues that have been happening, um, it looks like corporate greed may be the real culprit behind this. And the Federal Trade Commission is ordering Walmart. Um, Amazon, Procter & Gamble, Kroger, Tyson Foods, and Kraft Heinz companies um, to turn over information regarding the supply chain disruptions, basically um, saying that they are part of the reason that these issues are coming. So remember to be extra, um, give extra this season if you can, especially to our Native relatives, because they are... Um, like I said, more apt to be um, facing issues and shortages um, due to that. And then uh, one terrible piece of news I'm going to end on um, for you, and maybe uh, Wendy and I can talk about this in the last segment. Um, an entire wolf pack was poisoned in Oregon, and the police, um, Oregon State Police, are asking for help uh, for the Catherine Wolf Pack in Eastern Oregon that was unfortunately poisoned. So um, our hearts go out for our wolf relatives as well. Yeah, really. That's no kidding. I appreciate that. Uh, good news uh, or bringing us the news. I really appreciate it. Um, like Nancy says there, avoid big box stores, shop local, come to uh, Native Ritz Trading Post and buy some of Nancy's soap. We only got a few bars left, so we're really making it expensive now. Just kidding. Um, but we only have a few bars left. Hey, we'll be right back with Bob, Robert Lilligren. Stay with us. If you're hurting in your relationship or have been affected by sexual violence, you're not alone. Strong Hearts Native Helpline can help you through these difficult and uncertain times. Strong Hearts Helpline is a free 24-7 confidential domestic dating and sexual violence helpline for Native Americans. Help is available by calling 1-844-762-8483 or by clicking on the chat now icon on strongheartshelpline.org. This message is sponsored by the National Indigenous Women's Resource Center. Aho relatives, my name is George McCauley, Omaha Nation. Yeah. I'm a citizen of the Omaha Nation in Nebraska, but reside in the Twin Cities area. As we head into wintertime, many of us will be back together indoors. It's important to make sure you receive your COVID booster shot. Those 65 and over are recommended to receive their booster dose. Older Americans are more at risk for complications for COVID-19. So get your booster shot to make sure you stay safe and healthy this winter. All three COVID vaccine boosters have been approved. Find a vaccine site by calling 651-304-9986 or go to this website, vaccineconnector.mn.gov, 
888-998-9986 or go to vaccineconnector.mn.gov. Hey, Olgama, I've been hearing a lot about this term, climate justice. What is that? Climate justice is recognizing that the negative impacts of climate change don't affect all people equally. It also means transitioning from a fossil fuel-based economy to a more sustainable future. MN350 is one of the groups that's pushing for this transition to protect our futures. You can even get involved, too. That's great, especially since I'm concerned about pipeline projects like Line 3. How can I help MN350? Just find them on Facebook or visit mn350.org. You're listening to Native Roots Radio. This is Spirit from Reservation Dogs. Get up and listen. Hey, welcome back to Native Roots Radio presents I'm Awake and I'm your host, Robert Pilot. This portion of the show is brought to you by MN350, a grassroots organization fighting for climate justice. Hey, uh, we don't see uh, Robert Lilligren yet, as of yet. I, I can quickly text him. But one of the things I, I do want to uh, mention, and maybe if Nancy Bolio is still listening, she can give us a call. Uh, uh, one of the things that she put up here was really interesting on the comments. I'm just going to pop it up there and see if you can uh, read that, uh, uh, Ogama, just a second here. This is great radio, isn't it? <laughs> it says uh nancy marie or nancy bolio says uh they should have important appointed an mct citizen for that and hoping that he does better than the governor appointed to the mn dnr liaison who neglected timely communications between the dnr and tribes resulting in the five billion gallon water heist on the line three pipeline so the mct they should have imported appointed an MCT citizen for that. Uh, that's the Minnesota Chippewa Tribes uh, Network of Tribal uh, Bands and um, Nations in Northern Minnesota uh, that belong to the Minnesota Chippewa I be, I, Tribes. I believe between eight and 10 of the total 11 uh, tribes in Minnesota belong to the MT, MCT in Minnesota. And that uh, Nancy's really hoping that the governor um, the governor appointed Minnesota DNR liaison uh, who didn't communicate between the DNR and, and tribes to make tribes aware of the 5 billion gallons of water that line three took from Minnesota this summer is you're absolutely right, Nancy, a hundred percent, like as usual. We also got uh, Rob who, uh, who called in yesterday and then it's uh, one of our big fans lately. And he said, there is a test rocket that was fired off the other day to try to uh, avert this uh, big uh, rock coming at the planet here. So I guess I didn't dream that. I guess not. Uh, Rob also That's shared uh, the size of Big Ben. Thank you, Rob. I don't know how Big Ben is, but apparently Big Ben occupies 40 square feet and stands at 320 feet tall. Uh, so that's that's a rather large rock when we're talking about something twice the size of Big Ben. All right. Now that we've used all of Rob's information for this uh, portion of the show, we should talk a little bit, uh, maybe talk a, a little bit about the store. I know a lot of people have come out to Native Ritz Trading Post uh, that listen to our show. And I just want to personally thank everybody that has come out and and supported our Native artists. And also, not only our native artists, but our our workers, uh, Ogama and Wendy. Uh, we we don't work the store per se. We have uh, like five employees that are Native American, and uh, three of them are really young and could use the job. And we're we're helping with the economy, and we have have employees. And they're doing a great job. I mean, they are there. I just got a text from one of them saying that uh, we need to order more small bags. Uh, so I am in <laughs> I am in New York, and that's okay. I will order the bags, and Robert, they will be delivered to you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the store looks great. We have so many different products. We we hope everybody would just stop in, even just to look around at the beautiful art that's there, um, the paintings, the prints. We have beautiful jewelry, handmade jewelry, uh, soaps and lotions, and scarves. And these beautiful soy candles uh, that have our logo on it. And uh, they, I think, are our number one seller. Um, they smell wonderful. We have so many really yummy smelling scents, especially now for the holidays. So 
um, stop in and come and see all the beautiful art and pick up something. And we have things yeah. priced uh, really, you know, for anywhere from $10 to $600 and everywhere in, in between. So, well, we have some prints too that are a are $1,000 uh, from artists that, um, that um, are artists. And so we're supporting the artists and uh, getting them all out there. Oh, look who's here, Robert Lilligren. It's a penalty, Robert. You got to stay on two segments now that you are late. I don't know. I'm jumping between meetings here. <laughs> Bonjour, Robert. Uh, Welcome, Welcome. Wendy. So nice to see y'all. Sorry to be late. I was having some technical difficulties. Yeah. That's the story of our life is technical difficulties. Right. I know. You know what the worst thing is, Robert? Like if I have to jump in a, mo a meeting and then all of a sudden, you know, you're used to Zoom, you're used to these other ones, and then you get thrown a like a different one. You go, I don't know how to get in. Right. It's like you're usually pretty cocky. You go, oh, I, got, I only need five minutes to get in this meeting. And then it's like, whoa. Or five, yeah. or five seconds. Yeah, my uh, other laptop wouldn't recognize StreamYard. Well, let me kind of get in. So who knows? I'll figure right. it out. So we haven't talked in a while. It's great to see you. And it's crazy because we're all together. Ogama was uh, in California on some family business and she's back. And and Wendy's in New York uh, living the large life here while I'm like struggling to feed the dogs and cats. Yeah, I've been following you on Facebook, Wendy. It looks like you're having a great time. I'm taking care of my niece's baby. So it's been... <sighs> It's it's awesome and I'm really really enjoying it, but I'm exhausted. So oh, it's I'm been sure. really good though. I'm really happy to do it and help her with it. Go ahead, Ogama. Wendy, are you gonna come when I have my baby in March? <laughs> oh, I absolutely will. Nice. Oh, that's what you get when she's retired. That's a really good question. So, Robert, we haven't talked in a while. Um, it has a lot been going on. You know, a lot going. You've been on. a busy guy. Well, yeah, I, I only got a few years left. You know, I'm at that 60-year mark where us natives don't last much longer, so I got to really make hay, you know. And uh, how is the trading post going, the Native Roots trading post? It's going really, really way above uh, expectations. Nice. Um, yeah, nice. yeah, so we're, we're really happy and... Um, you know, I guess, you know, Wendy and Ogamo have been really working really hard. And I guess, you know, every once in a while, a blind squirrel finds a nut and I've been helping too, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> it's been, it's been going good. The, the better than, better than we could, uh, dreamed really. So it's going good. Yeah. Nice. Well, congratulations. I'll step back down, like I said, and spend some money, but it was great to be there on your opening night seeing you working hard, Wendy. I didn't, I didn't see Robert around. I will say that, but I saw you working hard. For sure. <laughs> I was probably preparing for some meeting. <laughs> so you're, you're over at Native Rise. Oh, uh, fancy oh. event. Oh, yeah. Don't say that too loud because I was also in a, a, a meeting at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> a legislative meeting. I was pretty impressed. Hey, hey, hey. Shh, shh. I'm in two meetings right now, just so you know. So it's the wonders of COVID and technology, right? We can actually be in two places at once. Yeah, right. You don't even need to be like beamed up like Star Trek. It's like right. places. It's crazy. But, <laughs> so what's going on in the avenue? What the, there's stuff going on nationally. Uh, women's rights are being slowly eroded. You know, rich people uh, will be able to. Which rich women will still be able to get uh, all the kind of medical stuff that they want to do, but poor people are going to be left out again, and uh, it's just a mess. It's an attack on lower wealth browner women for sure. And it is, it's dire. I was thinking about earlier today, you know, just, so I'm about your age, you know, so we've been in this kind of um, era of reproductive freedom of women having say over their bodies. And that's just been so normal. You know, it's even, it's hard to even imagine what it's going to be like when, when and if things change. Well, that's the whole thing, too. I mean, we can't take a deep breath here. And I, and I kid about uh, 10 years of living and working hard, but we can't take a breath. We we got another election coming up, you know, and we right. really have to make sure that people are engaged and, and um, yeah, make sure people are engaged. It isn't uh, all everyone voting because they're against Trump. They got to be for something, too. 
Right. And uh, yeah, this, it's interesting, this whole election coming up and, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of involved in politics, so I get a little hopeful about it sometimes. So I was looking, one of the things that I ran across is uh, the results of elections in, uh, in Georgia. And I don't know if you followed any of this, but in Georgia, they had uh, general elections in early November, some runoffs last Tuesday. And statewide, uh, Democrats flipped a net total of, I think, 42 seats, municipal seats, local seats. You know, but those, uh, which I think is amazing and impressive, yeah. flipping that number uh, mm -hmm. overnight. And then that's, those are the local organizations, right? They'll contribute to the statewide and national elections next year. So I, I just, you know, I look for hopeful things on the horizon. And for me, that's one of them. That's huge, too. And I think, um, yeah, I think if we just stay engaged and talk about it in shows like this and people like you on and, and engaging uh, and energizing our base to get out there and there's reasons why. And and we're finding out right now the Supreme Court is is totally what Trump said he was going to do. He did. He he elected people that were going to get rid of Roe versus Wade. And that's what he did. Uh, and this goes much longer than, you know, than Trump's time in office as well. I mean, this is a long, laid strategy, and I think we can learn something from this of um, taking over state houses, local offices, building a, a pool of candidates that can continue to run and uh, and then continue to be candidates for the Supreme Court, right, and get appointed. And so this, was, this has been decades of work, you know, sadly and successfully done. Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, Robert, uh, we got to take a quick break. Can you stay on just for a couple more minutes after the segment? Sure, sure. I'll stay on for a bit. Just this a couple will, minutes because I don't we, tell my I, other meeting, but this meeting's more. This is more interesting than my other meeting. Yeah. So. <laughs> awesome. We're with Robert Lilligren, uh, and we'll be right back. This is Native Roots Radio presents. I'm awake. Stay with us. Hey, Wendy, what are we doing for dinner after the show? How about we go to Jay Selby's on 169 Victoria Street in St. Paul. They have a delicious plant-based menu that's compassionate and environmentally sustainable. I'm getting their spot-on vegan Big Mac, the dirty secret. You can pick up and they deliver within a five-mile radius, or you can call them at 651-222-3263 or visit jselbys.com. Well, you sold me one. Let's go order at Jay Selby's tonight. I'm hungry. Hey, Kudigi to all my friends and relatives in four directions. This is Robert Pilot of Native Roots Radio presents I'm Awake. I'm here to ask you for your support. Finding honest Native-centered news is not easy. But with your support, we're able to provide accurate information about Standing Rock, Line 3, treaty violations, and COVID-19 in our Native communities. Please visit Native Roots Radio Network on Patreon and donate if you can. That's Native Roots Radio Network on Patreon. Pinigigi, and thank you for your support. Hey, Ogama, I've been hearing a lot about this term, climate justice. What is that? Climate justice is recognizing that the negative impacts of climate change don't affect all people equally. It also means transitioning from a fossil fuel-based economy to a more sustainable future. MN350 is one of the groups that's pushing for this transition to protect our futures. You can even get involved, too. That's great, especially since I'm concerned about pipeline projects like Line 3. How can I help MN350? Just find them on Facebook or visit mn350.org. If the statistics say that one in three Native women and one in six Native men have experienced sexual assault in their lifetime, it means our whole community is affected by sexual violence. One is too many. Don't stand by, stand up. Don't engage in acts of sexual violence and shut down the dirty jokes, the gossip, the victim blaming and shaming. As a community, we can change the way we respond. Contact the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition to attend a workshop to learn more. Sponsored by the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition. Hey, Minnesota, it's Brad Friedman, your friendly investigative blogger, journalist, troublemaker, and host of The Bradcast. Weeknights at 7 on AM 950. 
For too long, American Indian tribes have faced a competitive disadvantage when litigating against powerful forces. With its American Indian law and policy practice, Robbins Kaplan LLP seeks to redefine excellence for high-stakes litigation in Indian country. They have worked hand-in-hand with tribes to implement the Tribal Law and Order Act, fighting against diminishment of tribal lands and natural resources, and improving public safety on reservations. The Robbins Kaplan American Indian Law and Policy Practice serves tribes and individuals on commercial, government investigations, agency and tribal boundary disputes, as well as personal injury. Founded and led by former United States attorneys Brendan Johnson and Tim Purden, their American Indian law and policy practice exists to bring justice to tribal clients whose claims in the past have been dismissed or ignored due to their underdog status. If you or your tribe are facing legal issues, contact RobbinsKaplan.com or call toll-free at 1-800-553-9910. Spruce up your home with non-toxic vegan candles from Wisco Home Goods. I'm Don, one of the owners of this family-owned Midwestern business in Madison, Wisconsin. Our candles are 100% sustainable and come in a variety of unique blends and scents that make a perfect holiday gift. Plus, at Wisco Home Goods, we believe in giving back. With our Do Good, Smell Good campaign, a portion of the proceeds go to local charities. So support a Midwestern company that supports our local communities. Order now at wiscohomegoods.com. With your AM950 weather, I'm Brett Johnson. Look for partly cloudy skies overnight with a low around 32. Friday sunny with a high near 41. And Saturday partly sunny with a high near 34. With the holiday season upon us, check out one of the great AM950 advertisers for your holiday shopping. From delicious restaurants to bookstores, technology to health and wellness and home and auto, you'll find it all at the AM950 advertisers. Find a full list of our advertisers at am950radio.com. Hi, I'm Jane Fonda, and you're listening to Native Roots Radio. Hey, welcome back to Native Roots Radio Presents. I'm awake, and uh, we got a couple minutes here left with Robert Lilligren. And again, he's the director of Native American Community Development Institute here in the Twin Cities in Minneapolis. Uh, Robert, thank you so much. I just wanted to get your thoughts on... uh, uh, Stacy Abrams running, and then we're going to let you go and in, into your other meeting. Yeah, okay. thanks. I appreciate it. I always uh, uh, love being on the show, so I think thank you for the time. And you know, I just she's I've been believing that Stacy Abrams is going to save us all for a while, and she is yeah. just a real force of nature. And Georgia has been really building this organizing capacity, this political capacity for quite a while. I remember hearing back in uh, the 2012 national elections and just seeing what they were doing. And at NACTI, of course, we have our Make Voting a Tradition voter engagement um, project. Now, what, eight years old, I think? And uh, and so through that, we were in, we're in kind of networks, and you could see something was going on in Georgia. And then every year, you just saw this voter turnout increase and increase. And when Stacey Abrams ran four years ago, she came dang close to taking the governor's uh, office. And so this year, you know, she's, I hope, stronger. Those local elections where they flip so many seats, 42 seats across Georgia, that's all local capacity that can help put put Stacey in office. I'm very hopeful. And then she's so willing to share, right? They're training people up here how, mm-hmm. to, how to do that kind of capacity building that they're doing down there. It almost reminds you of the days of the Wellstone group that uh, got Peggy going and uh, yeah. Walls and many, many other politicians uh, years ago. Yeah, Wellstone action. And uh, when I was on the Minneapolis City Council, there was one term when two or three of my newly elected colleagues had been in the same class at Wellstone <laughs> Action. Our now Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan trained in them. And our now governor, Tim Waltz, was in that same class. They have kind of a candidate school, you know, uh, where they teach you to be a candidate and how to organize a campaign. And so that just shows the effectiveness of that kind of focused effort. And, of course, the extreme talent of our whiter sister, Peggy Flanagan, our lieutenant governor. Right on. Well, hey, I appreciate you sticking on just a little bit longer. We got you. We got you uh, uh, two segments here, but a little stretched out. But I appreciate all you do. And I really appreciate you coming on and talking national and local politics with us. 
Yeah, miigwech, you guys. Thanks for having me. Look forward to it next time. All right. We'll Take see care. you. Wow. That was, that's awesome. Uh, you know, Robert brings in a nice perspective here and, you know, I, I, I knew Robert could only be on for a short time. So I sent out some smoke signals to Nancy Bolio and Nancy's on the line right now. And let Nancy, what's happening? Uh, get that soap down here quick. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, quite honestly, Robert, that's exactly what I'm doing is making soap. I have some on deck and then I have some, I'm curing right now, so my intention is to get it out there. But again, it's you know my uh, it's downtime right now, and I, I just want to share something really quick, okay, Robert? Um, okay. Here in our local area in northern Minnesota, Bemidji, the Leech Lake, White Earth, Red Lake area, um, we have this arts initiative, and it's a grant, you know, that our artists can um, rec uh, seek, you know, and there's yeah. a little work that goes with it, and. So I almost forgot about it, scrolling through um, neglected spaces and places. I, I popped up on it. I was like, oh, my dear Lord. I had This was on Monday, and my deadline was last night at 11.45 p.m. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know what? That's just too bad. Then I thought about myself, and not just me, but... Um, if I could do this, I could, um, and, and tell people, you know, never give up and don't get overwhelmed so bad where it just holds you back. Cause when it holds you back, it holds us all back. So I didn't only do it for myself. I did it for other people to say, Hey, never give up. Cause I, you know what I did? I took it in three different parts. I did some on Monday. I did some on Tuesday and I did the last part last night and I got it in with an hour and 15 minutes to Spare. And if I get that grant or if I don't get that grant, I'm okay with that. You know, I feel accomplished because I didn't give up, Robert, and I learned something. I learned um, how to create a Dropbox. I had to update a resume. I had to do some um, a little research on, on price comparison, but uh, I felt accomplished and wiped out, but felt good. Yeah, well, you know, we try to tell our young people the journey is a reward. It's not the outcome. It's the process. And that's what you just did. I think I lost you. I said, uh, that's, uh, the journey's a reward. So you just did the process. We tell our young people to keep pushing forward and that's what you did. Right. And I think, you know, if, if we succeed along the way, we can also share those stories, um, as a way to inspire people and be the role models that our youth need, because, you know, uh, we have a big fight ahead of us, and uh, I just love the conversation that you guys are having about uh, Stacey Abramson. I think that's how you say her last name, but I kind of look up to her because I kind of see what goes on in Georgia. And, you know, reflecting back on what we need to do as uh, Native communities, we have to use our voice, not just our, our vote, because our votes aren't serving um, the purpose that we need. Um, we think when we show up, we're really going to be heard out and to some degree, it might be good for us, but um, for the most part, um, our politicians fail Indian country. And I just want to remind all our listeners out there, treaties are a nonpartisan issue. And yeah. every person in this country, if your, ha if your house, your land, your business is located on any treaty territory in the uh, United States here, you are still benefiting from the treaties that your ancestors signed, and you still have an obligation to those in perpetuity obligations that this country has to us. And you can't tell us to go back home to our reservations because Turtle Island is our home. And if anybody needs to go home, I would suggest those that don't want to get along with us, maybe they all build, should build another Mayflower and head on back. But um, I know there's a lot of good non-Native um, people out there that are willing um, to stand in solidarity and say, we can coexist and we can move forward. And I don't think, you know, um, either parties really serve our people, um, you know, so I think... We need to start showing up in our own local um, communities and attending uh, the meetings that we have, the city council meetings, the county mm -hmm. um, commissioner meetings, and, and, and work on civic engagement. How do we show up together collectively and build on that power? Because that's what we need right now, Robert. And that's what we see in Georgia, like you mentioned. It took them years to get there. Yeah. You know, it, it just didn't happen overnight. It was organizing skills. And, and I think I'm in the beginning phase of that, and I'm kind of excited. Not that I like politics, but 
I always believe if we aren't at the table, we are what's being served. And I want to make sure that we're not being served anymore or um, this environmental and racial injustice continues to happen. And these people say, well, that wasn't me. This happened a long time ago. You know, that's not our fault. Well, they're upholding systemic oppression that violate our right to clean water, that Mm -hmm. impede on our treaty rights. And so I think, you know, educating people and showing that relationship that these treaties are a shared history. They were there uh, for us to live in peace and to leave this place in a better way than we found it. So I think um, there's a lot of good work to do, and that's what excites me about my role at Minnesota 350 and our work that we're going to carry here um, in northern Minnesota at the Bemidji 3 office. That's going to be the new hub of our treaty work at Minnesota 350, and we're excited about that. Yeah, you know, there's a couple things I wanted to say to you before we let you go. Uh, Is one of them, there's an old native saying, and it's probably just from the 90s. It's really not that old. But, you know, the the left wing and the right wing are from the same bird. And so what does that mean? That means that people like you, me, and everyone that's listening need to keep all our politicians in check. You know, don't come in, you know, here every four years or every two years to, to get the Indian vote. Because we came out in numbers, you know, not only in the census, uh, you know, there's more Indians than ever because we're we're sick of this crap and we're coming out and we're being counted and we're voting. And, you know, your group and a couple other groups up up in the deep north uh, registered 9,000 uh, new voters this last cycle. So, I mean, we do have uh, the capacity and we do have a voice, right, Nance? Right, we do. And, and I think, you know, um, just moving forward, I think we, we have to, um, it, part of that, um, you know, rising and being resilient is we have to be community again. We have to learn how to take care of each other, honor each other, and understand that we're still here in a good way. And and I think if we collectively combine our skilled resources and, and our relationships, I think um, we can do what George has done. And, and I'm excited to work as hard as I did last election. I worked with Minnesota 350's uh, political leg on Rock to Vote Native style, and I uh, also worked with Four Directions. So I was night and day, Robert. And it was like uh, when November 4th came, I, I woke up like I was hit by a train, like I had a hangover and I don't even drink. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but it was all worth the hard work. And, and I hope that, um, you know, that we get out a lot earlier this time around because we have to build on community. And I, myself personally, I think everybody's worth more than just a vote. They are my people. They might, they are my strength. And, um, I think we, when we stand together, Robert, we don't stand alone and we're going to learn how to be creative and be strong again. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, I think history will prove that this has been a turbulent time and as like in 1968 and all these other uh, years that are turbulent, but also it always gets the darkest before sunrise, you know, and we just have to to remember that and um, move forward and engage people and just remember, you know, I always wondered why somebody wouldn't do something. And then I realized I'm somebody. So, you know, Nancy, that's, that's you in a nutshell. And I really appreciate you coming on. Well, thanks for having me again. And I'll get back to making that soap and, <laughs> and thinking about my creative ways I can teach everybody, um, you know, that we're all treaty people, nonpartisan. And um, we're not, this ain't about Biden, this ain't about Trump. This is about our people, our treaties. Right. And um, there is a political front for that. And we're going to rise um, showing them what that looks like. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for stopping in and last minute. And, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to hear from you, and I can't wait until we rock the boat native style again. All right, miigwech. Oh, hey, that was Nancy. Uh, wow, just an awesome Wendy in Ogama. We'd love to have Nancy on and her energy. And it's not only, you know, somebody that comes on and, and tells us what to do or how we should do it. She does it by example, and uh, you can't get any better than that. You really can't. You can't, you know what, she works really hard. And, you know, like she said, doing this grant, uh, even before doing it, she had to learn so many new skills uh, in order to finish the grant. And she did it. And that would have been overwhelmed, overwhelming for me. I would have just crawled up and went to sleep and asked some, somebody to do it for me. Uh, I would have called Ogama <laughs> right away. We would have called Ogama. <laughs> I don't care if you're pregnant. You need to help me with this. <laughs> No, but yeah, we appreciate Ogama. We appreciate Nancy. And we'll be right back uh, with the sacred animal section. Uh, you're listening to Native Ritz Radio Presents. I'm awake. Stay with us. <laughs> Thank you. 
JNS Bean Factory is a native owned, community supported, cozy, artsy coffee shop which offers roasted on site beans, live music, and baked goods. Relax in the beautiful outside patio. City Pages writes, voted top 10 coffee shops. Tucked into a quiet corner of St. Paul's Highland Park neighborhood, this coffee shop roasts beans on site from the best coffee growing countries in the world. Located at 1518 Randolph Avenue, St. Paul. The good stuff. Minnesota has the only original wolf population in the continental United States, and 80% of Minnesotans believe the wolf should be protected. Howling for Wolves is asking Minnesotans to respect our true wildlife manager, the wolf. Their survival is critical to our ecosystems, our communities, and even our economy. As highly intelligent animals with strong social bonds, Minnesota wolves deserve to be protected and admired. Learn more at howlingforwolves.org. Let's live and let howl. For too long, American Indian tribes have faced a competitive disadvantage when litigating against powerful forces. With its American Indian law and policy practice, Robbins Kaplan LLP seeks to redefine excellence for high-stakes litigation in Indian country. They have worked hand-in-hand with tribes to implement the Tribal Law and Order Act, fighting against diminishment of tribal lands and natural resources, and improving public safety on reservations. The Robbins Kaplan American Indian Law and Policy Practice serves tribes and individuals on commercial, government investigations, agency and tribal boundary disputes, as well as personal injury. Founded and led by former United States attorneys Brendan Johnson and Tim Purden, their American Indian law and policy practice exists to bring justice to tribal clients whose claims in the past have been dismissed or ignored due to their underdog status. If you or your tribe are facing legal issues, contact RobbinsKaplan.com or call toll-free at 1-800-553-9910. This is Winona LaDuke of Honor the Earth, and you're listening to Native Roots Radio. I'm awake. We are the Alusa Nation. Hey, welcome back to Native Roots Radio Presents I'm Awake, and I'm your host, Robert Pilot. This portion of the show is brought to you by Howling for Wolves, protecting wolves for future generations. Oh. You know, that's a tradition we did from way back uh, at the old, day, old days when we were at the studio. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was probably the highlight of some of those early shows. But, uh, you, you know... Uh, it's just really good to hear from Nancy and it's really, it's just a powerful, powerful thing that, uh, that she can jump on and and speak her truth like that. So we're really excited. Um, you know, I don't know. I just want to introduce you, Wendy. You're my awesome and beautiful wife and you talk about animal issues at the state and local level. And you're also in New York. So we're all sad, or at least I'm sad. Everyone else can see it, but, uh, uh, why don't you uh, tell us your name and uh, what you want to talk about today? Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Hanaji Hihani, and that means cares for them. And as everyone knows who listens to the show, uh, my Dega Curtis gave me that name. His Native American name is Mashke Hanajinga, which means walks on white clouds. Uh, I am a humane policy volunteer leader for the Humane Society of the United States, and I work on animal issues at the local and state level, as you already said, Robert. Um, and I want to thank Ogama for bringing up uh, the uh, pack of um, wolves that have been killed in Oregon. Um, and I have an article here from thehill.com. It was just uh, updated uh, about two hours ago. Um, it's written today by Joseph Guzman. Um, and it is uh, Oregon police are searching for suspects who fatally poisoned wolves. Uh, authorities in Oregon are asking for the public's health, help in finding who's responsible for fatally poisoning eight wolves in eastern Oregon earlier this year. In February, officials with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife um, notified state troopers that a wolf fitted with a tracking collar, appear to be deceased. Investigators who arrived on the scene in Union Union County found three males and two females dead, the uh, entirety of the Catherine pack. 
Over the next few months, several more wolves from different packs were found dead in the same general location and toxicology reports the wolves have been poisoned. Quote, to my knowledge, this is the first wolf pack to be killed by poison in Oregon, Oregon State Police Captain Stephanie Bigman told local KGW8. To my knowledge, there are no suspects. All investigative leave, leads uh, have been exhausted, and that's why we are reaching out to the public for assistance. So if anybody who's living in Oregon and knows anything about this, um, please get in touch. Oregon is home to more than 170 wolves across the state, and killing the animals with poison is a Class C felony punishable by five years in prison and a $125,000 fine, according to Statesman Journal. The Trump administration, as we all know, last year lifted federal endangered species protections for gray wolves across most of the United States. The gray wolf has been protected under the Endangered Species Act since 1970, when the wolf population was around 1,000. The wolves were nearly wiped out across the continental United States during the 1900s, primarily due to habitat and hunting. Um, so I hope that they do find those suspects and the people who were responsible for poisoning these wolves. Um, it's really, um, you know, just a sad state that um, we have to worry about our wolves uh, being poisoned in such a horrible in such a horrible manner, and I'm, I'm really, you know, really sad about it. Um, so I appreciate you, Ogama, bringing that news up, and we'll just keep, um, you know, following up to see if there's any leads or anything happen. Go ahead, Ogama. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Crash, uh, who comments on our show um, and listens in every day, and uh, they were the ones who sent me that um that link for that today. So as, as heartbreaking as the news was, I wanted to say, uh, McWitch, thank you, Crash, for letting us know so we could talk about it. Yeah. And um, the other day when I was on, I was, um, you know, I'm kind of making uh, light of things while I'm here because I'm helping my niece with her baby. And, you know, we're not watching any news. It's baby, baby, baby all day. And I, and, um, you know, I'm not really uh, preparing for the show, so I'm glad that you brought that up and I was able to bring that up. But what I was really going to just finish talking about today were I started talking about the other day were the 10 things that our wolf relative, the dog, hates us to do. So I'm going to follow up um, and finish with those just a few things that they really they hate. And we did talk about some of them. Um, one of the last things I think we talked about is when their owners are tense and stressed. Uh, we exude a lot of uh, stress hormones um, and the dogs can, um, you know, pick up on that. And it also stresses them out. So unless a dog is a trained therapy dog, um, I think our dogs, um, I know my dog, I know Wanda, especially she can pick up when I'm not doing well and she'll come over and lay with me and comfort me. So she's always comforting to me when I'm not, um, you know, doing well. Um, uh, but well, we're, so, uh, we're, we're so chill here right now. They're all sleeping. They so, are all sleeping. I'm we miss I miss, all, we're yeah. all chill, but we're all sleeping. I They're miss the dogs deep. a lot too. And the other thing that they really, dogs really hate what we do is when we take them for a walk and we don't let them sniff. I mean, that is their world. You know, they just get so excited um, about going outside and sniffing everything. Um, I know like our one dog, Gracie, if we let her sniff everything, we would never even walk. It would take us two hours to walk one block because she wouldn't want to sniff everything. Um, but give your dog ample time to sniff their uh, surroundings. That's how they get their information and how they learn about their surrounding world. And they really, really, really enjoy it. So um, being, being ignored, dogs hate to be ignored. So I know sometimes when I'm on the phone and I'm just scrolling through Facebook, you know, Wanda will walk over and she'll like kind of paw me like, hey, all right, enough, get off your phone. I really, um, you know, want you to pay attention to me. So I have uh, doing this. Here's an obvious one, uh, having their nails trimmed. I think that goes both for cats and dogs. 
Um, Wanda, I do not trim her nails. The vet has to do it because she just doesn't allow us. And uh, Gracie, our other little white Maltese uh, dog, she would she let us uh, cut her nails because I didn't. I don't think she really knew what we were doing, so I just did them really fast. So got it over with. Um, the vacuum cleaner. Um, they hate the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it's on the list. I mean, you know, I mean, so what do you do? You don't vacuum your house. Um, I know our dogs head for the hills when I vacuum. Um, and uh, my aunt had a dog and she just had to say, I'm getting the vacuum. And he would stop doing whatever he was doing because he was petrified of the uh, uh, vacuum cleaner. The other thing, this is funny because it's it's written uh, by a British guy and he calls it cello tape. So I had to look up cello tape and cello tape in here in America is just like packing tape. You know, the big thick packing tape when you stretch it off the roll and makes that noise. That's on the list of what dogs hate. And I just can't believe, I think it's pretty silly, but I think some dogs uh, hate uh, tinfoil. And when I was a kid, our St. Bernard dog, Mr. Bojangles, was afraid of the reflection of pots and pans. If you took a pot out, um, he would run down the stairs and he was afraid of that. So there yeah. you go. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> That's our sacred animal section. Uh, Thank you. about wolves. The wolves... Uh, a, a relative, uh, the dog, which, yeah, and you know, the wolves, you know, like our commercial says, are our true wildlife manager. So let's just remember that and keep that in mind. Special shout out to Ogama, Wendy, uh, Robert Lilligren, Nancy Bolio. If you're listening to the show, you are part of the resistance. We need to resist, divest, join a group, run for office. We are the seventh generation. Free Leonard Peltier, stop line three. Please get vaccinated. This is Gregory Rich from Habitation Furnishing and Design and Drink in the 